What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Making Bank. Today I have a few things in store for you. Uh, one, including upgrading my gear and giving you guys an update on everything and doing something new that's going to be a majority, a uh, major way that I'm going to be making my money from now on and that is Frost Dragons. Now uh, before I do that I want to upgrade this armor because let's face it, Frostlet kind of sucks and this dragon skimmy is total crap. So um, I'm going to keep the prosy, but I'm going to sell this dragon skimmy. Also, I've been doing, oh, that dropped since I bought it. Um, I've been doing a lot of fishing. I did some AFK fishing today, and uh, I managed to catch a bunch of monkfish, sharks, and swordfish. Now, um, obviously, these are cooked, and that's because I cooked them. and. I got the sharks and the swordfish from rock lobsters. Uh, rock lobster familiars uh, randomly generate uh, sharks and swordfish, so that's a little extra GP. So for one mil monkfish, I made an extra 100k, 130k, or 140k roughly. So uh, it's worth it to have it, plus it boosts your fishing level so you catch monkfish faster. So definitely worth having a rock lobster summoned if you uh, have the summoning level, which I believe it's level 70 requirement, something like that. Don't quote me on that. But anyways, I've made a mill so far, so we're going to go ahead and sell a lot of this and buy Torags, because Torags is pretty good armor, it's relatively cheap, and it'll get the job done. So, uh, all these coins in my money pouch right here, this is all the money from making bank, and you may be wondering why I have Crossy, it's because I'm going to be buying it with my GP that I make. So, uh, that is that. And... and I, I cooked these because they sell for a little bit more when they're cooked, so that's why. I do not need sharks, and they will not sell. <sighs> Alright. We'll just leave that, and we'll go ahead and sell those. We're gonna keep the sharks because we'll just we'll just go ahead and use the sharks. Wow, monkfish will not sell. We're gonna go ahead and leave that in the G, and I will resume the video back when I have sold everything. Okay, so we are ready to head over to Frost Dragons. Uh, my inventory is set up like this: Super Tech or Super Strength, Super Tech, Serbru, Super Store, Anti Fire Pot, uh, three Prayer Potions, Retort, Teleport to House Tabs, and sixteen Sharks. So this should be a good setup for going to Frost Dragons. Uh, again, I have Torags, Amulet of Glory, the Tokul Zo Ring, Barrel's Gloves, Dragon Boots, Karasi Sword, Arty Cloak Three. Helm of Natiznat and a regular anti-dragon shield. Uh, again, leave a comment down below if you think I should be able to use my dragon defenders. Um, I do have, I have like 17, I have 16 of them in the bank. And uh, if you think that I should be able to use that, um, let me know. And also, I wanted to point out that the enhanced Excalibur is very useful here if you have it. So, um, definitely use this as a spec weapon because it'll save you some food. And uh, I do not expect to use this much food throughout the trip, but you never know. So let's go ahead and head there. Um, you may be saying, why are you using Teleport to House Tablets? Um, it's going to cost you more money in the long run. Well, it's just easier because uh, it's pretty much the fastest way to get there and bank. Um, so when I'm done with this trip, you'll, you'll see me... You'll see how I bank, and I'll uh, give a pretty good example of how to do that. So, um, say you don't have some of the things that I have in my house, you need to renew your summoning points. There's a small obelisk right here. You need to renew your prayer points. There's an altar right in here in this church, and you run right past that to get to Frost Dragons. Now, to do Frost Dragons, you will have to have 85 Dungeoneering to access this. And it is the uh, Frost Dragon uh, Asgardian Dungeon, or whatever. 
And uh, this is pretty much one of the highest things that you can unlock with Dungeoneering, other than obviously some of the things that you can do in uh, Dungeoneering, like while, while you're doing a floor. So um, definitely something that's worth doing. And I think this is a bot because they're wearing Dragon Play Lake. Oh, they're going to Wyverns. Oh, there's someone's gravestone. Let's read it. Six minutes. Hmm. I think that's a five minute grave, so I think they already looted it. So we'll just uh, keep an eye on our clock and come back out here in six minutes. So uh, let's go ahead and go in. Now, normally I would recommend having a cannon for this as well, but obviously we're short on funds, so we have to make do with what we have. So uh, go ahead and pot up with your anti fire pot and head on in. Sarah Brew, Super Store. Super attack, or strength and attack, and lunge. And then obviously put on protect magic and berserker. Now this isn't going to be the best because it's just a Karasi, but it's still going to be better than what you normally would hit with like a whip or something. So I definitely recommend using a crossy or a Bractor's Blade over a Whip because they are highly uh, weak to um, stab attacks instead of stab and range attacks. So I would either do range or uh, a stab weapon. Okay. And probably wouldn't recommend having this many food if you're my high of defense but you never know it comes in handy um, I'm gonna go ahead and summon my war tort after I'm finished with this kill but it's pretty easy to uh, fill stuff up and uh, especially if you want to bank those charms so just use bones on the war tort and you'll be fine if you have a pack yak, that'll be even faster XP, faster money. So I would definitely recommend having a pack yak if you have the summoning level for that, which requires 96. And uh, if you do have that, then you should be making pretty good money. Uh, what you'll want to do with pack yak is fill it up with like per pots and supplies to stay here forever, and then have the winter storage scrolls so that you can bank bones and just camp here forever. And uh, you'll seem like you can last ages if you if you do it that way. Alright, I need to uh, take that green charm. Because I still need summoning XP, so we're going to go ahead and pick up all the charms. If you have uh, 99 summoning, don't worry about it. Or if you don't really care about green charms, then don't pick it up. But personally, I also do green and gold if, if I need to. Um, now this blue ball that's floating around it, that is a special attack, and you do not want to attack the Frost Dragons when that's happening. What that is, is it's kind of an anti-botting measure that Jagex implemented, and so far it's working pretty well because there's no bots. But um, what it does is, if you were to attack the Frost Dragon when it's doing that attack, or that special, it will hit you for 100% damage of what you would have done on it. So if I would have hit a 500, it would hit me for a 500. So that is like the main way that people die at Frost Dragons now is because of um, that blue orb. It's not because they're so hard that you just can't kill them. It's because of that special attack and you just literally kill yourself pretty much. So you can't really AFK this, so you, you do have to pay attention a little bit, but it's still pretty easy to do without paying attention. Also, if you're using a cannon, you don't have to worry about the special attack hurting you because the special attack, or the cannon, will not actually shoot the uh, frost dragons while you're, um, while it's doing that blue special attack. So you don't have to worry about the cannon killing you. So just wanted to give you that heads up so that you don't have to worry. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish off this inventory and I will resume when I'm done. And then we will go from there with our uh, loots and how much we made in one trip. And then hopefully we'll have enough to buy a cannon. Okay, so I just finished my trip, and I didn't quite get a full inventory, but I did get a full war tortoise, so 
we're gonna go ahead and bank and see how much we've made and possibly buy a cannon now obviously I already have two cannons in the bank but um, you know it's still a good idea to buy one with the money that I earned from this so we're gonna go ahead and head to the GE because either way I need to buy more supplies such as more prayer pots more anything I don't know we'll, we'll just go with the flow and possibly buy some cannon supplies if we've made enough money alright so deposit from the familiar deposit all frost dragon bones just deposit that so we're gonna keep those for summoning for training summoning because that's good thing to do and uh, no nope, we're gonna have to do one more trip because this isn't quite enough money to get us there but it's still a good start almost 500k for half a trip because I, I don't count it as a full trip because we didn't actually fill out the entire inventory but you know that's not bad that is one step closer to getting there so I'm gonna keep doing this a couple times and we will resume the video when I get my cannon okay welcome back so a slight change in plans I decided to make some extreme attack strength and defense potions another thing that I wanted to do before I went ahead and continued is I wanted to buy a soul wars cape and instead of buying an extra one I'm just gonna go ahead and buy one from my bank because I already have a bank space for each of my for each of the colors of that so let's withdraw 150k because that's how much it costs to buy it from uh, Zimber Fizz or whatever. So there's that. Purchased a Soul Wars Cape. So uh, now we can use the Soul Wars Cape and conserve our prayer even more. So kudos to being efficient. Okay, so I kind of failed. Um, didn't realize that my familiar was about to die and I had to pick up the bones off the floor. And on top of that, I forgot to take food completely, so I had to soul split flick the entire time, which uh, good fighted my prayer, and uh, yeah. So, a couple things to keep in mind. Don't forget food, don't forget that your familiar is about to die, and go fast. So let's go ahead and see how much we make with this trip, even though we're kind of failing with the whole buying stuff at the right price but 571k a cannon cost cannon set to cost 693k so we need 700k so one more trip and we should be able to buy our cannon and a few cannonballs we need to buy at least 200 cannonballs how much is that going to cost us cannonball so oh don't want 1k we want 200 so 69k that's not too bad might buy a little bit more depending on how much money we have so I'm gonna go ahead and gear up and do another another uh, run and we will talk to you when I get back okay so I took the liberty of taking out my dragon defender I know you guys would tell me to go ahead and use it anyways because you guys gave me a massive response on my void equipment question on whether or not I should use my void and I'm I've decided to not use my void, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, like my I'm gonna go ahead and use my dragon defender because that's not something that takes like 14 hours to get. It's something that takes just a couple minutes to get, and I do have quite a few of them. And you don't really need amazing gear to do it. I mean, you don't really need amazing gear to do void either, the pest control. But you know, I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and do it because it does help out a lot with the XP per hour here and it is a non-tradable item that I did earn and I do have a lot of them so um, I decided to go ahead and do that and uh, increase my kills per hour so um, off to do another trip and as you can see this time I do have sharks I actually picked up this energy potion but I don't I didn't really need it I'm gonna go ahead and drink it because it was free and um, Brought my war tort this time. I have extreme set and anti-fire. We're all good. I'm gonna be mage praying the entire time anyway, so a regular anti-fire is good enough for me. So let's go ahead and pot up 
and get this mage prey on come out here and do some damage and I will talk to you after this trip is over because we got some loots to, to talk about and a cannon to buy so we'll see you in a bit okay and after another successful trip this one more successful than the previous ones I actually pretty much got a full inventory uh, with the exception of these four and good job with the loading lag JX um, so uh, doing well making some more money um, getting pretty low on pots now so I, I'm gonna have to make some more extremes but this should be enough to be able to buy a cannon and it is okay so the cannon as I've looked up many times costs 693k and I have 1.1 mil so 600 93 okay uh yep draw that so i have 500k left uh, my cat's in the way there we go okay deposit all and so now i can use one of my cannons yay i can use a cannon all right so now i want to buy uh, some cannonballs. I'm just gonna buy some of the ones that I already have. So let's try, let's do 500 cannonballs just to start off and price check that. So that price checks at 130, 173,500 coins. So withdraw 173,500 and deposit that. My cat is driving me insane. So now that we have a cannon and some cannonballs, we're going to head back to Frost Dragons for another run, and this time it'll go a lot faster. Welcome back to the Frost Dragon Cavern. Now this time we have a cannon. So we're going to go ahead and head out here and pot up and set up our cannon. Now it doesn't really matter where you set it up, but I like to set mine up somewhere around here. Um, there are several locations that you can set up your cannon. It doesn't have to be right here, it can be up there, it can be right there, it can be anywhere as long as it's in an area that has access to plenty of dragons. Now, why do you want to use a cannon? The cannon greatly increases your kills per hour and will definitely make you make more profit. So here, like I uh, said earlier, the cannon will still attack during this blue phase, but it does not do damage back to you. So you do not have to worry about taking damage from the, the self-inflicting blue orb of death as I like to call it. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this trip and I will give you a re full report on how much profit I've made excluding the cost of cannonballs. Now, I did start at 500, so we'll see what I have left when I'm done and how much money we've made. So, I'll see you in a bit. A Couple things I wanted to point out while I'm here. Uh, you do not have to have curses, you don't have to have turmoil. You can be doing this with piety or even just ultimate strength if you if you really don't have a high prayer level. Um, the only reason why I'm using turmoil is because A, I have 99 prayer, so I can, and B, uh, it really does help increase the kills per hour. And you also want to make sure that you're using some form of pot, uh, whether it's just a super or an extreme or an overload. If you're using overloads, you'll still make profit. Granted, your profit will be cut by quite a bit from the cost of the overload, but it will increase your kills per hour. However, I would recommend you use extremes over overloads because it just it seems to be a more reasonable cost and uh, it seems to last a bit longer. Um, granted, I kind of let it I, I let it uh, I let the boost die down a little bit more than I should. But um, even if you do not have the uh, herb lore level, I would definitely recommend using at least super uh, super set like I was using before. Uh, before I had enough money to create extreme sets, so I just wanted to point that out. And uh, another thing that is very oh I can get dropped there. Another valid point that you should take note is if you do any Dominion Tower stuff. Uh, for example, if you've... Ooh, grab me Lantidines. I can use that for extremes. Uh, if you do any Dominion Tower, you can... 
you can do um, if you have the dread nips unlocked bring them here because if you have a slow kill like that last one that I just had bring out a dread nip and it'll dramatically speed up your process and what's better dread nips are free so it's not going to cost you anything extra and it will increase your kills per hour so those are just a few tips and I'm actually not going to keep this lamp to dime because you get way more money for a uh, frost dragon bone so um, you really don't want to take uh, pick up the drops that are noted yeah sure pick up the charms if you really want to but don't pick up the noted drops because it really does not make sense doing that and also just make sure to pay attention to the timer down below uh, make sure you do not run out of uh, anti-fire potion because if you do you're screwed so just want to make sure that you guys are understanding that and you should be fine so again I'm gonna go ahead and pause until I'm done with this trip and then I will show you my profits and we'll see if we can make enough money to buy my rapier back in this video see you in a bit welcome back and I just finished my trip with my cannon and I wanted to show you kind of the, uh, the difference so I got 34 frost dragon bones and two water talismans which are AK each probably not the best idea to pick those up because frost dragon bones are worth more but um, it actually equals out to be about the same since uh, you know a stack of two st equals a little bit more than a frost dragon bone so it's alright that I picked it up plus they stack so if I got more it would be fine so I got 583k here and I, I have 271 cannonballs left that means that I used a total of 229 cannonballs and at a price of 347 GP each that means it cost me 79 uh, 79k to, uh, to use the cannons, which means that I came out with a total of 504,000 GP profit, which is pretty nice if you ask me. Granted, that's not including the cost of the potions, but still, pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and continue doing this until I have enough money to uh, buy back my rapier, which uh, I agreed upon the price of 2 mil to repair it, even though it's not quite fully degraded. I will still get rid of two I still have to pay two mil to get it back and once we have the rapier we're really gonna make some money so I will uh, resume when I have the next trip done in the occurrence that you get back that you leave your cannon at frost dragons and you come back to your cannon being disappeared this is how you get it back uh, what you want to do is teleport to Falador or you could teleport to Edgeville, either one will work and then run north uh, actually let me bank let me bank my loot first then we will run north alright now I'm gonna go ahead and grab a Falador teleport tab to uh, get me back because I need to come back to Falador um, so uh, we go north from Falador and keep going north probably faster to go this way from Edgeville just saying but you see this encampment up here you want to come up here Come on, Ron. You can last me the whole way. You can do it! Maybe not. Maybe. Maybe it'll get us just close enough. Alright, so, once you're here, you want to go through this door here, and talk to Nelodian, and replace cannon. I've lost my cannon. That's unfortunate, but don't worry. I can sort you out. Keep that quiet, or I'll be in real trouble. Of course. So, he just gave us back our cannon. No, this is not how to get a free cannon. You have to actually lose a cannon to get it back from this dude. So, if you had a uh, artisan's workshop uh, user interface or you know GUI change or whatever you want to call it, graphical rework, 
Uh, you'll have to go back to the Artisan's Workshop with that cannon to re-upgrade it to the Golden Cannon or Royal Cannon. So, that's what I'm doing. Coming back to Falador and re-upgrading it. Why? Because it looks so much cooler as a Royal Cannon. And obviously, if you've done this, you know what I'm doing, but this is just a reminder in case you did not know. So you just go down these stairs here, come over to Elof, and talk to him. And can I change my cannon? And you want to select the best one that you want. Now, to, do, to get the Royal Cannon, or the Golden Cannon, you have to have 50% uh, uh, loyalty or respect to get the golden cannon and then on top of that you have to have another 100% respect to get the royal cannon so in total to have a royal cannon you need at least 150% respect from the artisans workshop so that takes quite a bit of time I believe I calculated it out and it took about 1 mil XP or so to get it so uh, just keep that in mind as you're going for actually 1.5 mil XP so keep that in mind as you're going for your Royal Cannon if you want to do it. It's very costly, but it looks pretty cool. So um, that is that. Alright, so I thought what better way to finish off this episode than with me repairing my Chaotic Rapier and getting it so I can use it for this series. So as you can see, 2.1 mil cash there. Uh, let's go ahead and withdraw that. Oh, I have to put in my bank pin one second. Okay, so, uh, 2.1 mil cash there, go ahead and withdraw that, and I wanted to show how much I have earned so far. This is just a rough estimate, uh, there's about, uh, about 600k more, uh, between 600 and 800k more worth of stuff that's actually in the bank, you know, potions and the cannon and stuff like that, so about 600 or 700k more, but um, just over 4 mil, so, so far we're doing really well, and... Uh, my chaotic rapier is at 9%, so I figured why not recharge it and I'll spend most of the money as I stated in the first or second video that I would have to pay the 2 mil to recharge my rapier. So let's go ahead and recharge. Uh, that's right, I think, yeah, I have to use it on him. It's been a while since I've repaired. Fixing this is possible, the cost is up to you. So, um,. Okay, ah, oh, shoot, how much was that? That was one, one eight, I think it was 182, like 1.8 mil, so, um, we'll have to withdraw, like, another, another 200, it was like 100, 190, we'll just do 200 mil, or 200k. We'll just withdraw that, so I have 119k cash left, and I can use my Chaotic Rapier now. So, that means that we can go back to Frost Dragons and Pwn. So, this will finish off my fourth episode of Making Bank. I've made just over 4 mil so far, so that brings us a lot closer to our goal of the Divine Spirit Shield. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Peace.